Get the big picture with St. Louis photographer Jim Trotter. That's next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner. Well, photographers see the same things that the rest of us do, sometimes though a little bit differently. Look at this shot from photographer Jim Trotter. That's the St. Louis cityscape, as you can see. It's very dramatic. Uh, you probably know Jim's work. You've seen it. It's around town a lot. He does studio work, commercial work. And we're also going to talk about a system that he uses called the Gigopan Camera Robot System. So I'd like to welcome to Cityscape, uh, to City Corner right now, Jim Trotter. Hi, Jim. How are you? Hey, Steve. Nice to be here. Nice to have you here. Uh, I mentioned the Gigopan thing, and you're, that's something you're going to demonstrate a little bit later. Correct. It, it, relatively new uh, technology? Well, the technology came out approximately six years ago, and uh, Carnegie Mellon University is basically hosting these, uh, this site where you can upload your visuals. And uh, what happened, my son, who works for me, said, hey, Dad, you're going to like this picture. And it was a picture of Obama's inauguration. And I looked at it, and I said, wow, that's cool. What it is, it's a vista, but in the computer, you can zoom in on any part. So basically what I tend to do today is maybe take a picture of the set here and then show us where we can, say, zoom in on the fireplace or zoom in on the clock. But what it does, it makes one picture out of uh, a lot of smaller images right. and puts them together so that the span that you're looking at would be wider than you would normally see. Well, correct. And you can do a full 360, and you can actually do a sphere, and you can drive around in the sphere. So there's a lot of technology that's becoming more and more interesting, you know. And actually, that first picture you saw on the screen I took without using the robot, I had uh, won a national contest from, uh, well, they, well, part of the prize was some tickets to the top of the arts, uh -huh. and they gave me things like that. But I went up there with my camera, and that screen around it is that window. So I took eight pictures, boom, boom, boom. That was a very simple one. Then I mm -hmm. used the computer. You overlap them about 30%, and then you stitch it together. Now, that is up uh, online under the arch. I have like 300 pictures online. And uh, I use the Gigapan when it's required for something wide and something unique. I've done up to 25-foot uh, pictures. The file size is enormous. So uh, as you stitch these together, it adds them up, and you get a big file. And that gives you the power to go big. I mean, you can actually take 360s with this, uh -huh. but the file size is, you know, ends up being like 5 megabytes. Uh -huh. My file size ends up being gigabytes. So oh, you're talking above my pay scale now. Ah, I didn't mean to talk about that the technology stuff, yeah. but I sort of know what you mean. Sure. When it's a big file, it's hard to email. I know that. Well, that's true. <laughs> I guess uh, probably the max you could mail is about, well, JPEGs, 20 megabytes, but that's very slow. Okay. But it's getting better. I mean, when we started, I mean, one megabyte took 10, 20 minutes. Okay, so, when, so a little later in the program, we're going to have you demonstrate that Gigopan, you brought that sure, robot bought, system with you. Yes, I did. And so we'll do that. Let's take a look at uh, uh, something, Jim. I want you to tell me what this is. I think this is a work from your past. All right. I think it looks like a card to me of some sort. All righty. Um, there it is there. Oh, yeah, well, this was a while back. I'm actually a survivor in the industry. This was from 1983. I was the official photographer for the Miss Universe pageant. And actually, they were here almost a month, and I did parties and all kinds of events, and then uh, we shot the still pictures. Merit's motivation was part of it, too, and uh, basically, I had my press pass, and I could get in anywhere and shoot these beautiful ladies, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So Let's look at some more of your work, a sure. couple of them. And you can just kind of explain what we're looking okay. at. That looks, you've got a couple studios. Well, I have a, well, a studio on Conway Road, which is my home studio. I have a retail space now out in uh, Chesterfield Mall. This shot that you guys are looking at now is uh, Metropolitan Square. 
and once a year I'm in there for a month. And typically, that's downtown. Yes, yeah. it's the tallest building in Missouri. People don't probably realize that, but uh, I actually get to display down there once a month, and the building is filled with uh, I, I call them, you know, lawyers or high rollers or people who like maybe to utilize my art. So actually, I I sell uh, artwork from here. I would imagine your art goes well in a business setting, reception areas, things like that. My St. Louis stuff does. It uh, seems like. You know, people want to have you walk in and feel comfortable Let's there. Let's look at the next one. Sure. Mm, this is this is back in the day. That's I see the TWA on the far side. But oh, uh, oh, yeah. now, what's interesting about this, Steve, is when I shot it, those clouds weren't there. It was kind of an okay day, but with the advent of the computer and a little bit of time, you can put in a little better sky. So I don't, you know, I don't tell people these are actually real I mean they're I hope better than real so I try to make let's, them right, let's talk about that just for a minute because I've talked to photographers before and I guess they're you know they have different philosophies uh, I know they have different philosophies some of them on how much um, they'll um, edit a piece or fine-tune it or whatever the appropriate word is sure uh, some I guess are purists and won't do it at all well yesterday I photographed 10 lawyers and what I tell these people when they come into the studio, too, is I say, well, I can give you 10 pounds <laughs> in 10 years. So a lot of times I do the retouching in front of them, Steve, and basically uh, it seems like everybody kind of remembers what they look like in their mind. So I don't want to go beyond looking like I did it. Uh, I don't want to, like I say to my people, I don't want to get caught with retouching. Now, when you do glamour photography, if you're photographing a pretty girl, you, these are some shots that look like modeling right. shots out of the 80s, right? Right. This is old. I just found these and sat there and uh, shot them up. But if uh, you get somebody here, you can make them as beautiful as you want. And that's my job, is to make a person as beautiful as I can. So I utilize uh, Photoshop and a lot of tools to make their skin perfect. But then there's a, there's a, a point where you don't want to go too far, right? True. You don't, like I say, you don't want to get caught saying, oh, that's overly retouched. So basically you could make me uh, Tatum Channing or something, right? I could, I could do <laughs> this, Steve. Now, the thing is, <laughs> I look at you and I say, okay, you probably 10 years ago had a little darker hair. Yeah. yeah, and maybe a lot of times, too, when you pose somebody, like when I photograph um, heavy people, I have them sit forward and I have them stretch their neck a little. Mm -hmm. Then in Photoshop, I push it in a little bit. And see, they don't know I did it. They think they're good. <laughs> they think that's the way they well, that's look. That's cheaper than a lifestyle lift, I guess. Well, it's definitely. But is. you wouldn't darken my hair. Like if you're going to do a headshot of me, would would well, you darken my hair? I would darken your hair if you're sitting in front of me and I say, Steve, what about this? We just do it five percent or ten percent. Now I've had people in there, and this sometimes, if they're very vain, they just say, Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, Terry Crouppen, and it took me about an hour to retouch him. It was kind of interesting. The girl said, well, Terry's going to give you five minutes, so be ready. Get in there. He's going to be wanting to go. And anyway, I showed Terry what we could do, and he started loving it. He let me do more and more. Right. So uh, that's why I say I like you there while I'm retouching. And typically I remove bags, uh, you know, and I smooth out skin, and I take out lines. Well, I could use you on the show. There you go. <laughs> Every week. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at some more of your artwork. Sure. I call it artwork. That's the right way to put it, isn't it? I consider it artwork. Uh, some people consider photography photography, but they don't realize that today a photo is generally enhanced. Here we have another view of St. Louis from across the river. Right. So you were talking about how you uh, fiddle with things. Are we looking at anything you added? We're looking at 80 shots. This, this is the Gigapan we were talking Gigapan. about. Gigapan. This is a series of photographs. It takes like a column, the, the robot moves, it takes another column, another column. But did you fiddle with the colors yes, or the sky? Or? I did. Me and Mother Nature work together in <laughs> harmony. We saturate. We do whatever we can to pump it up. We want you to go, wow, Steve. If you can go, wow, when you look at it, you're going to want it. Wow, without realizing it's been right. adjusted. And then you would say, well, heck, I wish I could have been there. I'd have got the same shot. But see. Yeah, you know, I'd seen your work for a long time and just not knowing it was you. Probably. And now you know I recognize it. I mean, how many people do what you do in town? Well, I think every photographer thinks they do a good job at making things better. And some of them can do it, and, you know, some of them 
just think they can do it. But, uh, you know, if you do it enough, and if you can say, get it out there, like these fireworks were not in there. But I shot this for Sax Electric, and then I put it in there. This was my third book. And, uh, yeah, you, uh, you meant, not that you brought that up, mentioned that. You've got a series of the Best of St. Louis books. Right, I'm on number four. And I tell you, the book industry is changing, too. I wonder if uh, that might be my last. I don't know. Everybody's looking cyber now. You're looking at books online and such. But we have a whole series of books that uh, we use them as marketing tools, too. Like, people can go through here and say, oh, Jim, that's very cool. Can I have that for my wall? Mm -hmm. And I want it six foot. And I say, I'm your man. <laughs> I can do it for you. We do our own printing. Oh, here's that uh, Metropolitan Square building here. Wow. But, uh, That's an angle I've never seen. Yeah, we can't can't get back far enough. See, so with the advent of the new technology, I, I keep the building line straight, uh -huh. and uh, you can only get back about you know 50 foot, and the building's like you know really tall. Yeah. But uh, most of, there's 50 pictures in here that are the wide angles. So, what kind of time is involved in that? Well, the shooting time, like as we shoot here today, to pass through. Each exposure might be like, say, six seconds. And if there's 50 of them, you can see I've got, you know, 60 times uh, six seconds. I mean, maybe it takes 10 minutes to go across the scene. I get back to the studio, and I put it in a program, and it stitches them. And that may only take half an hour. Mm -hmm. Then I upload it, and people, then I can give you the link. Matter of fact, I can give you a link, and you can see what we've done. Before we take a break, let's look at another piece of your work. This sure. is photography from our guest today, Jim Trotter. Oh, this is like this is like a postcard, Steve. And uh, basically, what this card is is was a, a teaser that I would mail out to companies and say, "Hey, you know, we're photographers, and we do this is our best of St. Louis teaser, I guess." So, advertising in photography is like what I do it for other people. I've got to do it. For for myself too. Mm -hmm. So I produce a lot of things for other clients. For example, like we also do stuff like stock photography. Here's a resource guide. And the resource guide, uh, they use pictures of mine. They rent the use rights. Right, so like if I had a company selling something and I needed a picture of the arch or people eating in a cafe, I might find something you've already done. and. Be rent it from you or buy it from you. Yeah, right? you, get, you get use rights, and it's probably better because a lot of my pictures may have 50 hours of retouching. It sounds crazy, but once you get started, you know, you start playing around. I take all the cigarette butts off the street. Uh, if the paint's not <laughs> right on something, I repaint it. Right. So I try to perfect the pictures that I well, have. Well, Jim, when we come back, you're going to demonstrate that GigaPan robot system, which will be interesting, and I also have some questions about how you got started in this business. All too, right, Steve. So. Sounds good. We're talking with St. Louis photographer Jim Trotter, and we'll be back with more City Corner right after this. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time.
Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. The odds of this daughter of a clergyman spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. I'm Steve Potter, and welcome back to City Corner. Today we're getting inside the head of St. Louis photographer Jim Trotter, and uh, just talking to him about his career and about uh, his work and what that's all about. And earlier, Jim, we talked about this Gigapan robot right. system, which is what we're looking at right now. Could you just kind of uh, tell us again what the whole idea Okay, is? basically what this does, it allows you to take a series of pictures. With that, then you can get a broader view. So you use the robot to computerize, you know, to pick the points you want. So you go up or left. So you want to take from here to uh -huh. there. Or you can do a 360. Uh -huh. Once you get that point set, you put it in and you say, okay. Then you go to the lower right. And as so you like how out, much time is involved taking like a th if it was a 360 shot? A 360, like when I was in New Cathedral, I took actually 360 shots and they were like 20 seconds a piece. I think it took two hours, but that was an exceptionally long one. If the lighting is bright, I mean, you can do a shot in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. In here, if we did the set, we should do the set, it may only take maybe 12 minutes. So you're going you're to activate this now, and then we're going to go back to the couch and talk some more. That's the so, plan. So during this last segment, it's going to be making it swoop, and later you may end up with something. We, we hope so. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. Well, there's a lot of variables, and there's a lot of shots, and then the computer stitches it. And if nothing goes wrong, you get a good picture. So that might be on your website at some point. Well, we could you do never that, know. too. Yeah, all right. Well, are you, is it going now? Or? Uh, I haven't started it. Well, basically, I have to get over here and get my, my points set up. So I would go ahead and uh, set it up for my lower right, which would be, in this case, uh, I could go over here, uh, set it up so that I can figure out where I want to shoot from here mm -hmm. to there. Okay. So I'll go ahead and activate that. And okay, we can let it go later, but basically you see how it moves and then it launches and it moves. So it'd probably be better we just go on back now All and right. we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about it and we'll see if we can get it later. All right. All right, Steve, thanks. You know, and I'm curious, I was looking at your camera there, you being a, pro a uh, professional photographer, how many cameras do you own? Well, actually, now I, I have uh, three large format or medium format cameras, a Hasselblad, and actually there is a robot that will take the Hasselblad. There's like a bigger one. I sold my 8x10s, my 4x5s, my panoramas, and all those cameras. I got rid of uh, a lot of stuff, you know, eBay, everything, and I've gone now to digital. But utilizing even a small camera with good quality optics you can actually achieve a great picture. You know, Jim, I'm just uh, wondering what your thoughts on how photography has changed. Um, I hate to reveal my age, and I won't, but I do remember my first camera in the 1960s. Do you remember those brownie cameras where you'd look sure. in the top? I had one of those, and then yeah. also in the 60s, uh, when the Polaroids came out, the black and white Polaroid, where you know you developed a shot in, yeah. what, it take three minutes or something like oh, that? 60 seconds. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so anyway, here's my point. Uh, those were the days where everybody had their own camera. Now people use their uh, iPhones or whatever it might be. Ta -da. So I'm wondering, do people really have cameras anymore? Well, these are actually cameras. And in some sense, the uh, optics are such that a lot of stuff is in focus. They're, everybody's a photographer now. So it's actually changed the scope of my business too. And uh, some of the things now we offer is like, you can bring me a file and I can print your picture. And uh, like, again, everybody's a photographer, so. You know, I was at a big box store just last week and I knew I was gonna talk to you, so I was conscious of it. Uh, 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 it was a big box store and I walked by the section where they had, they actually, I was surprised. There were actually like at least 35 different kinds of cameras for sale. Yeah. So I guess someone's buying them. Well, yeah, I mean, I think when photography hits you as a expression of something you like to do, you wanna capture your life or capture something else, then 
you might want to upgrade from, say, the cell phone. You know, when you shoot a big picture and it's a great picture, but then you get home and it's <coughs> soft or bad, uh -huh. then you kind of get the bug. Well, maybe I need a little better picture. So. And I just want to, uh, this is tongue in cheek, but as a professional photographer, what do you think of selfies? Well, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, I think that people hold them too close right. and it makes their nose big. I mean, right. you want to want to zoom out and get them, get them back a little further. Right. Uh, it's kind of a... They get on my nerves, that's why I brought yeah, it up. I, I, uh, I don't do it. I think other people can look at you and study the lighting and make sure it's bright and get a better picture than you can get a selfie. Let's uh, look at some more work by photographer sure. Jim Trotter. Why don't we look at about four or five shots here, Jim, and you can just tell us. Oh, this is interesting. This is a gigapan. Those are made out of cups. This was last summer down at the um, Shaw's Garden. On the web, you can zoom in and see each one of those cups, and it's crazy. It's you know just exciting. Now, that color in the sky, I added, I added the sky. This was opening night, probably 80 shots, that little Canon camera. Mm. Okay. It's beautiful. Let's Thank go to the next one. Here's another one where I just added the sky. It's like St. Louis Science Center. Right, Science Center. So again, I like to make things as you know exciting as I can. Uh, I look for that wow yeah, it's beautiful. in a picture. Let's look at the next one. All of these are in my book on St. Louis. Now this one I've done uh, many times eight foot. Now this was actually old school. This was shot with an eight by 10 camera. I built with a 72 millimeter lens. Also added the sky. The other thing about photography is timing. If you stay too late, those lights will really blast out mm -hmm. there. So you have to shoot it at dusk, you know, twilight. Let's look at one more. Oh, here's a different sky on the same right. picture. So I'm just showing you if somebody likes a different sky, you know, you can, you can uh, cut out a little deal. And you can throw 10 skies in there until they say yes. Isn't that interesting? They get confused, yeah. though. <laughs> I have some books here that I, we just kind of want to run through because sure. it make it sort of uh, illustrates your career. Um, this is a little pamphlet for a gentleman who's based in St. Louis, and he makes very exclusive fountain pens and yeah. you did you did the work right for we do the photography for dave and it's about 10 years now that we've been doing his photography and they're very high-end pens and you know it's just one of the clients what we get tend to get now is the real high-end work i mean because everybody else again will get out their cell phone and shoot pictures for right but when you get something really good then now you this goes it. back doesn't it this was one that actually started my interest. A gentleman was utilizing my stock images in this book probably eight or nine years ago. And uh, it was like a resource guide. So people can, again, use my pictures. They pay me to use the pictures. And it's cheaper than having a photographer come out and take Generally, a, a spot, it's, something specifically for their ad. If you called me, Steve, and said you want a picture of the ballpark right now, it mm -hmm. wouldn't look so cool, you know, because it's still snowy and crappy so what i get is you know the best of the best oh this one here on the top was for the clarion i shot a 360 up there old school where i stitched it manually now the gigapan helps you stitch it with their software mm -hmm. but that was actually i shot the first one in like 92 and then i've shot it again we got a couple of books to run through this is yeah. jim These trotter's are, panoramics right there's like 50 or so in that book. My son puts these together. This is by Blurb. They put together one-off books. You know, you can make one to see if you like it before you go into big production. Hmm. As you make a book, it's a good way to go. We talked about your series, The Best of St. Louis. Right. This one sold out. I mean, they always sell out, and then they make another one. This one was uh, third, the third in the series. Pretty successful. Did you, you ever run out of landmarks in St. Louis? Well, you know, there's new ones coming up, uh, you know, coming up now and then. We just got the, uh, the Musial Bridge. Right. New Have landmark. you shot that yet? Absolutely. Got that one shot. I didn't bring it along, but I did shoot it. Now, this is also nature stuff. This is uh, the Earthscapes. Uh, we, my wife and myself, we travel and we shoot pictures, and, and uh, we get some customers that say they want to decorate with nature. We let them look through the book, and they then they can pick one and we can print it up for them, any size. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a, a catalog. And you mentioned uh, in the other segment, you made reference to your son who you work with who's also a photographer. Right, my two boys work for me. Uh, 
they basically do a lot of the work. My son, Jim Jr., does a lot of photography, and he does some really exciting visuals. Uh, you know, he has, a lot of my stuff is more structured. You can look on the back, Steve, and see he does more wild stuff. And uh, there's a typical, but some of his stuff is all over the place. A lot of my stuff has got to be marketing a product and is very directed. Well, there's there's something you got to make a living. Yeah. But so do you do um, do you think do any photography just for your own pleasure? Maybe you're not going to make any money out of, out of it, but you just do it. Well, I actually do a whole series of pinups and things like that, and I get into the art shows. Pinups. Yeah. What pin do you mean, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> you know what pinups are back in the day, but. Uh, you know, I think I love things that are beautiful. I think women are beautiful. I utilize women in my deal, and I maybe also even work on them a little bit, make them even prettier. I'm at the coffee cartel with about 20 pieces down there, and Dennis has me in there, and every six months or so I change out. So my real art, I guess, I mean, in a sense, is my St. Louis art. But, you know, if I could make a living producing just fine art, I, I'm going in that direction as I let the boys take over, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, the transition has been, you know, forever. So It always is. Yeah. So. We, we have a few minutes remaining and a few more shots. Let's take a sure. look at some more of your work. This is Photography by Jim Trotter, St. Louis photographer. Well, this is Powell Hall, a very cool spot. Uh, I generally call them and get permission to go in and... Uh, you know, like with the Fox Theater and all those places, sometimes I light them and I take in lights and it takes me uh, two hours to light the set. Yeah. And then sometimes, uh, well, if I'm doing the gig things, I did, the, um, you know, the Peabody and it was 80 shots, took me a couple hours. And it was Peabody's also in, in the new book now. They spent uh, $80 million in right. restoration. It's a beautiful place. Always, Jim, I, cool. I kind of need to uh, wind things up. Sure. But I want to let people know you have a website, so if they're interested in your work, uh, tell Tr us where, how do we find it. Yeah, trotterart.com. And, uh, of course, I'm, I'm on Facebook and everything else, but uh, trotterart.com will have uh, quite a bit on there. It also leads on to these gigapans right. where you can maybe find Great. us. Well, thank you for demonstrating that today, uh, right. Jim Trotter, and thanks for saving images that... Uh, will outlast all of us, there you right? Go. Thank you, Steve. Jim Trotter, so nice to meet you. All right, thank you. I'm Steve Potter. That's all the time we have for City Corner this time. Thanks for joining us.